Basically, this morning, what I want to do is to, first of all, announce that we will be launching our 2011 manifesto tomorrow evening, as well as on Sunday at the rally at the Luziknan Tarmac. The manifesto, as you know, is a very important document. For us, we view our manifesto as a contract with the people for the next five years. And if you would have looked at our 2006 manifesto and have done a report card, you would have seen that with the PPP Civic, we take the issue of our manifesto and stick into the commitments we made therein very, very seriously. Um, we're also very proud of the fact that the 2006 manifesto, we've been able to exceed. And in fact, when we did the analysis, uh, we found that there were a number of initiatives that exceeded what we had promised um, in, the, in that manifesto. In all areas of our national economy and in development, I must say, if we look at our 2006 manifesto, and if you look at the progress we've made over the years, um, five years of successive growth, um, improvements in general well-being and living conditions of our people, um, expansion of our freedoms, our rights in Guyana, You'd have seen the tremendous achievements we've had. And certainly in the 2011 manifesto, uh, one can look forward to a very profound, practical, and as well as forward-looking program um, for the development, modernization, and transformation of Guyana. So I want to invite you to be part of that event. Although it's a fundraiser, also it's a gala dinner we have at the Princess Hotel. Um, but members of the media, we will be facilitating your uh, participation should you be interested. And then also at the rally at the Luziknan Tarmac there too, um, there will be another segment of the launching uh, of that manifesto. Also regarding the rally on Sunday, um, preparations are moving ahead, notwithstanding the inclement weather and uh, I want to assure members of the public, particularly the people who live on the East Coast, that we have and will make arrangements um, in light of the weather conditions, um, because persons, hundreds of calls have come in already and been asking what about the weather. So rain or no rain, we will be having the rally and we will also be putting facilities um, there in place um, for that East Coast rally, which is considered one of our uh, many important rallies are bringing people together. There are a few surprises that we have, and because they're surprises, I'm not, I will not be disclosing today, so don't ask me. Uh, um, in terms of some appearance and presentations, um, as well as persons who will be joining the PPP Civic platform and to be part of the PPP Civic team as we head to the November 28 um, elections. The, the third and final point um, that I want to raise, and this is where I will um, bring in the issue of um, Mr. Bino, is that we have noted uh, unwarranted and even at times vulgar tax on persons who in some point or the other would have been associated um, with the opposition parties and have decided that they want to be part of the PPP civic winning team, um, that they have been singled out for the most horrific attack and assault. And again, we want to condemn this. 
Uh, we also want to say that we live in a very democratic and free environment, and people are free to identify something that the PPP Civic fought for. Um, since when the PPP was one of the founding principles of the People's Progressive Party uh, when we were established, and it's something that we hold very dearly, the right of every single Guyanese to be associated with a political party of his or her choice. And that right is a sacred one and must be defended. And I want to call on all civil society to reject those who try to single out, threaten, um, go on the platform, go in the media, and make the most horrific, racist, vulgar comments um, that we've seen. Mr. Baino himself has been singled out, um, and there have been others too who, will be, who would have been singled out. And also, as we go forward and closer to nomination day and after, perhaps they will have many others because the team, the groundswell of support and persons who want to come to the PPP Civic, who would have been associated with the PNC, APNU, AFC, that list is growing. So perhaps I want to preempt them assaulting and attacking those persons and saying people have the right to be part of any political party. Um, we may differ on political views and perspectives and if you raise issues, yes, you have the right to counter those issues, but not to go after people's family, calling home to people and making threatening phone calls, um, saying on platform and describing in the most derogatory terms um, what, what those individuals are. And on that note, I'll ask uh, Mr. Baino, who has joined us from Linden, um, to, to offer a few comments on that, because he has been one of those who's been recently singled out, as I said, among others, and the others will have also their say in this regard. Philip. Thank you very much, Minister. It is not that I am unduly worried about the attack and the threat, etc., because I am no political Lilliputian nor neophyte. I understand the nature of the game. I understand the nature of Guyana's politics. And I know very well the role division based on ethnicity and racism has played in really troubling our country. So I'm not surprised. But I worry, I worry about what is going to happen in this new dispensation. Guyana today is not Guyana 15, 20 years ago, much more 30, 40 years ago. Guyana today is populated by enlightened persons, young persons, educated persons, who make decisions based on objectivity, analysis, informed decisions. It is becoming more and more difficult to mobilize political support on the basis of race or ethnic cleavage. Much, much more difficult. And what we're going to see in this election campaign, we're going to see thousands, if not tens of thousands of black people, African Guyanese, who are going to come out and boldly support the program and policies of the People's Progressive Party Civic. And they are going to do so based on objective analysis. And what for the life of me, I cannot understand. I was in Linden when APNU had the rally on Saturday. And I heard the attacks, some of it uh, uh, targeted at me, some of it targeted at other black people. I heard the attacks, and I wonder why this should come from APNU. Because the APNU's arrangement of today, in fact, is a, is a, they say I jump ship, and others jump ship. Well, the entire APNU arrangement of today is a ship jumper's arrangement. It's an arrangement where people from parties that were attacked by the PNC brutally in the past, some little, humble, simple, one-man parties, like my good friend Bacchus from Linden, who were attacked in the past, these guys are now with APNU. And so when you check them, Rupert Rupnorain from the WPA, I know that the WPA was specifically targeted by the PNC, specifically targeted. And to see these guys subscribing to attacks of people who, in fact, join other political parties freely of their own volition, I can't understand it. And these guys have no moral ground. They have no moral standing. And it is not something that they should do. 
because, like I said, the entire APNO arrangement is an arrangement where former enemies come together and they create this amorphous thing called APNO and they are going to use it to fight their campaign. Questions, clarifications? About the local campaimers, <coughs> you spoke about respect for persons following the general policy. There is a concern by some persons that the government and government officials have been writing the employers of persons who are outspoken against the government, who are outspoken against the PPP civic, <coughs> writing their employers, making complaints about their statements on Facebook, their statements on BlackBerry and whatever other social media, including the Minister of Sport writing an, uh, a regional organization about an employee there and other employees in New York. How does this government weigh this? Like, well, first of all, I cannot confirm what does not exist. Um, I'm, 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 you ask me whether the government has been writing employees or employers here and abroad, whether or not because of what people have been posting on Facebook. And I'm telling you that that is not the case. Um, as I said, this is a sacred right that we guard. People can express themselves and also, people must not be annoyed, including members of the media, when they are rebuttaled to statements or positions taken. It's part of a democratic and enlightened way of, and a culture too, of discourse um, to have agreements. And we must, at the end of the day, if we don't agree, we must agree to disagree in a very civil and a very constructive way. But I want to make it absolutely clear that the government has not been targeting any employee or any employers making complaints because of what people posted on Facebook. Regarding some issue at, at the, what the Minister of Sports would have written, um, my information is it concerns the functioning of the West Indies Cricket Board of Control. It doesn't concern um, a political statement or political views, and I think um, persons must not in any way misrepresent a reality to suit their own agenda. Well, I'm not sure whether he wrote them because they're Guyanese and may have a different view. What I'm aware of, I haven't seen the letter, but what I've, what I've been advised of is that the, you know the issues with the West Indies Cricket Board of Control. I don't have to expand on that. And I'm no authority on cricket or how cricket should be managed here or elsewhere. Um, so I, uh, uh, let, me, let me make that uh, confession. But I was advised because it was brought to my attention something being circulated in black very message. I received a couple myself, and when I was advised why it is the Minister of Sports' name was being called, he told me that he wrote the West Indies Cricket Board regarding the functioning and management of the West Indies Cricket Board. And that is what I know, and that's what I've been told. There have been other cases. Uh, can, you cite, can you cite those? I've not. I am not aware as to the specifics of those letters, but the policy is um, there may be issues whereby persons may express a particular view. And uh, to correct that view and to correct that impression, the obligation is up to the government to shed light and to amplify in those matters that might be raised. That in no way cannot be construed as targeting or trying to um, um, in any way prevent people from expressing their views. But you would know if you have a certain view and you're on Facebook all day and someone have, would have, and you would, I'm quite sure you'd respect if someone says, I don't agree with you. These are the facts. It is not to point out a misrepresentation of a reality made by X, Y, and Z cannot in any way be equated to targeting or in any way trying to go after that individual. It is the issue of setting the record straight. And we know in our country, far too often, if you check the blogs, you check Facebook, and you check especially the social network um, mechanisms, there are lots of misrepresentation about what the government is doing, what it's not doing. Take, for instance, the issue of corruption. Take, for instance, the issue of corruption. There's a deliberate, calculated, and well-organized campaign to paint the government as corrupt. And a lot of this message 
is being circulated on the social network mechanism. If the government corrects that, or the government highlights the fact, how can one take that to being that you're targeting or going after individuals? Doesn't the government reserve the right to defend itself? Doesn't anyone reserve the right? If you uh, are, are being singled out, or anyone in the media or any political party being singled out for any particular action, doesn't that person reserve the right um, to, to defend and to set the record straight? And sir, you mentioned, you spoke about um, vulgar attacks from the platform against persons who may be involved in political running or whatever, support other parties. The media is not running for anything. The media is not in a political race, but yet we continue to see the president who is getting ready to leave office from the political platform, from your platform, what he describes as cussing on the media. He says he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Vultures, carrying crows. How does the party that he is campaigning for differentiate the two? Your president, the president of the country, and who's campaigning for you cussing out? The media with all of these vulgar attacks. Well, as again, First of all, the president has not on any occasion in a very broad or sweeping way condemned the media. That's fa fact number one. What the president has done, and as a member of the executive committee of this party, he has highlighted instances and elements of the media who have been engaged in excesses that have not necessarily helped the, in a constructive way the process of education and also the process of public knowledge and matters of, of, of importance. I want to make it absolutely clear. The president has not, and I'm not, and I'm absolutely clear too that the president will not in any sweeping way condemn all members and all sections of the media. What the president would have done and others on the platform would have pointed out instances, in his view, where there are breaches or unprofessional conduct. And it's not only the president of Guyana. I've seen the president of the Guyana um, Public Service Union. I've seen members of civil society. I've seen members of the trade union movement have been identifying those same elements, too, for breaches and excesses also. Well. Media as vultures, as carrion crews, and would you, Robert Bassard, go on a cussing out campaign against the local media? What I, would, what, what I would say, no member of our society, no member of our society is above criticism. No member of our society cannot hide under various cloaks and various corners hoping that they can go down a political line and take a strong political position, and then at the same time, run for cover under this whole trapping or the umbrella, well, we're, we're the media and we should not be. Or if they belong to some other organization, take a political line, and then the next day decide, well, I'm not a, I, I'm, I should not be free, um, I should not be accused of, 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 of any political bias, or as it were, be mentioned in any political discourse. No one, no one in our society. And that is something that we cherish. This is what the PPP Civic has brought to this country, an aura of freedom, democracy. The president is criticized every single day and is more, and his, in, in, in many regards, is disrespected by members of the media, the way in which they report him. And also, if you look at the, the same it's social- It's okay for him to cut back. I am, I am I'm making the point, comrade, or Mr. Mosley, that no one is above, <laughs> shall, yes, no one is above criticism. No one. If, if you err, if you engage in activity, and if you join the political free, expect that your name and expect that you will be part of the discussion. It's a very simple saying. Identical if the kitchen, uh, no, uh, no one, no one, you must let after this press conference, you must talk to Mr. Bino because the things that they told him, I've asked him not to repeat at this press conference. You must find out what they did and what they said that they will do to him. And then you will know and equate that 
with, with the president making a commentary in his view as to the conduct of the media. Next issue. I agree with the president having the opportunity, having the opportunity to pinpoint where there is a breakdown in ethics and on professional conduct on some elements of the media. That, uh, well, I'll, I don't work with GCOM. But how would you respond to GCOM? I've, uh, Gordon, I've given you my answer. I've given you my answer. And you've heard it loud and clear. I repeated it at least four times. No, but you not answer the specific No, that, that is my answer to your question. That's my answer. That's our answer to your question. You cannot determine what my answer will be. And sir, on another issue, Gina's staff. Uh -huh. uh, some of them have been working um, outside of Gina. I think two are now working with impressions. Are they on paid leave or are they on a special arrangement? Could you explain that? Two they Gina have employees their Anyone who's working with the campaign has resigned. Every single one. Working with the Kim. I don't know who which young man behind some green wall. You have y'all have a man at the back there? I don't know. I don't know if they're hiding a man at the back there or a boy or something. Yeah. This I mean people are here. I'm sure I've, all of you are not part of the campaign staff. So they might be here for that some reason. Yes. The Mr. Nagamutu has been written to by the General Secretary of our party, seeking clarification based on what was reported in the media. There has been a subsequent telephone conversation, and up to the time of this briefing, um, the General Secretary and our presidential candidate has advised me that he has not received any formal notification from Mr. Nagamutu of his withdrawal or his intention um, to leave the People's Progressive Party. At uh, this 5 to 12 today. No formal, but informal? Well, I was not privy to the conversation, and neither did I seek to get much details of those conversations. But I, I think you would prefer me to deal with things that are very formal and official at this level. How do you feel about the public pronouncement you had to say? As well as the ASB, how do you feel about that? Well, Mr. Nagamutu um, is a very colorful character and someone whom I have a lot of respect for. Um, but Mr. Nagamutu, at the end of the day, is entitled to his views in whatever position he takes. Um, we wish him very well in his, in his future endeavors. For us, it is just another media distraction. And the work goes on. Put it this way, put it this way. We value every single member of this party um, and we treat them very um, in an equal and, in, and, and respect their views and their positions. So every single member of the party is very important. Um, so whether it be Mr. Nagamutu or Mr. Jones or Mr. Smith, we, we value the, um, the membership of our party. Absolutely not. Why not? We've been around um, since 1950. We've contested successive elections, and, and different things happen at different elections. And uh, you know the results. And if you wait another five weeks, you will see the results again. Pronouncements. Um, could you say, could you respond to some specific uh, pronouncements you made, such as? being bulldozed out of the leadership of the party, the Jagannites in the party are so disappointed with the direction in which the party is being led, uh, the dominant clique that is uh, controlling the party. So. I, th I think that is a direct attack on the general secretary of a party. It's a direct attack. If you say what is correct, because I'm going according to media reports, so I'm qualifying my statement. If whatever you say, is an accurate account of what Mr. Nagmuta said. I think it is an affront to the leadership of the, the 35 members who sit in the central committee of our party, of which Mr. Nagmuta is a member. Um, um, but at the end, end of the day, Mr. Nagmuta is entitled to his view, and we will ex re respect his view. And then once those are made formally, 
um, they will be responded to appropriately um, by the leadership of our party. Mr. Nagmut, is it for a meeting? I hear something happening on Sunday. Have you called him in to discuss this? Issue? There's no meeting, to the best of my knowledge, on Sunday. It's a meeting seeking clarification on what was reporting in the media. No, no, no. I did the, the meeting. The letter is not about a meeting. The letter is about seeking clarification. I am in no position to discuss matters of disciplinary matters um, of the, about the conduct or lack thereof of any member and what action will be taken. The presidential debate, um, the party has indicated that it will not be a part of the debate that is being organized by some civil society groups and the will die. And in announcing that it says the party is not giving adequate time, uh, take adequate notice, and that the candidates are so many busy around the campaign season. But in that same statement, or a statement that Mr. Ramatar put out, he said that um, he's agreed to a University of Guyana degree, but only time and format need to be worked out. But first of all, you talk about this debate being organized by civil society. I have a letter here from the Georgetown Chamber of Commerce indicating that they are, are no longer part of those arrangements. As you know also, um, the organizer of Morandai was very um, insulted to the or presidential candidate, very preemptive to, um, in a statement that was, was that was issued, and you know, um, I've had cause to um, point that out. I must say, since that I've received an apology from from that um, individual and the organization, recognizing that they would have erred uh, in this regard, and I I will make it absolutely clear that we will not tolerate any disrespect any disrespect for a presidential candidate. So that's the reason you pulled out of the debate? Uh, you, let me answer, I'm, 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 my answer's unfolding. Don't get too excited. And, and, then, and then also, we recognize that we have a very hectic schedule. Our presidential candidate, we, we, are, we are contesting in all 10 regions and we intend to service via our campaign equally all 10 regions. We're not a coastal party or a, a village party or a regionalized party as some of the others are. We want to be seen, heard, and felt in every single community of this country. And every single community wants to see a presidential candidate. And for us, that is more valuable, going directly to the people of Guyana and discussing and engaging and explaining and being accountable to, to them than to some selected few in this regard. We put greater currency on that. Having said that, we're always willing to debate, and uh, I'm just being informed that uh, format and another grouping has been suggesting a, te a, a debate on national television involving um, some of the three, uh, well, the three leading candidates. And uh, so we will be very much um, open to that, as well as to the University of Guyana once we once time and the arrangements are convenient. But we will not sacrifice our interaction, our discourse with the people of Guyana to, to allow some organization which would have received money to spend those money in, in, in any way. I'm awaiting formal, formal um, information on that. But don't you see a nationally televised debate? Mm -hmm. That, candidates if you would listen to me, I said this format that I've just heard about a new initiative to have a nationally televised debate seems to be attractive. The Maroon Eye thing was the same thing. Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about the, the details of that. And how do you agree to a debate with the University of Guyana, um, but still say the time and format has to be worked out? Are you so concerned? Well, we are waiting. I, I'm, we are waiting on the pro, on the proposed timing from the University of Ghana. So, what's the problem really? Is the problem with Maroon Dai and who's running Maroon Dai and the disrespect from Maroon Dai and that you don't want to take part in that debate? Is posted on the Maroon Dai. The, the position is that the PPP civic presidential candidate is open and willing to debate once um, the arrangements are convenient and it does not in any way affect 
our campaign or take away from the work we're doing village by village, community by community, uh, municipality by municipality, region by region. Uh, for the campaign today, we have not been seeing a lot of the, uh, the older faces, so to speak, uh, the Koma Chans, the platform, the Navalita, the China Falls, well, for the side, Mr. Hattie, for example, the older faces that we are very accustomed to see, including Mr. Rabbi, and his spots. I guess you have not been attending some of our public meetings because some of the names you've called have been on our platform, yes, and um, they have been speaking. And also, as I say, at the, we are only rally number four this Sunday. We only at rally number four. We hit the Bartika. When we finish at Bartika, we're, in the, uh, we're down to um, Lethem. Then we're at Mabaruma. Then we're at Maruka. Then we're also on Regina. Then we're down at Stortville. We have Bat. And then we have a big celebration uh, of, of unity and development again. Oh, um, we are looking at possible venues. So, some of the face, uh, faces that you've, or the names you've called, they have been on the platform already. And there will be again. Well, the campaign, for me, we have five weeks more. A surprise is a surprise if it remains unknown. Yeah, but there's another surprise <laughs> over there. It's breaking. I'll urge you. I'll urge you. I'll urge you to temper your anxiety and your inquisitive uh, nature. Anything else? Thank you very much.